Hey everyone, I'm Double Blind's co-founder and editor-in-chief Shelby Hartman, and today we're going to talk about Mapacho. But before we get into the video, I just have to say to those of you that have been following us for a while and cheering us on, thank you so much. We do read the comments of support and we appreciate it. And Double Blind is truly, truly a labor of love. So we're glad that you're getting value from these videos. And if you want to know when we come out with new videos, then we invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also turn on the notifications so you never miss a video from us. So today we're delving into the rich history and mystical properties of sacred tobacco, known as mapacho in the Amazon. And firstly, I want to start out by saying that mapacho is considered an incredibly sacred plant by indigenous communities throughout the Amazon, and that different kinds of tobacco are used ceremonially throughout the world. So at Double Blind, we do our best to include and give visibility to the voices of the stewards of plant medicines. And much of what I'll share with you comes from interviews that we've done with them, which you can find in the full article in the description of this video. I feel like it's especially important to name that because I personally do not have ancestral ties to anyone that has used tobacco ceremonially. So tobacco has a tumultuous history, as we probably all know, and while it's been used for longer than archaeological records can even trace, it's no secret that it's become a big industry with an estimated global market value in 2022, wait for it, of $867.5 billion. And a lot of people who are passionate about upholding reverence for sacred plants and their stewards point to what has happened to tobacco, which is essentially the commodification of a sacred plant which has been infused with toxic chemicals as a warning for what could happen to other sacred plants and fungi like ayahuasca and mushrooms if we're not careful. So generally we're taught in the United States and other parts of the Western world that tobacco is bad and unhealthy, right? And it's true that there's rigorous data showing that smoking cigarettes can cause a host of health issues, but it's just not that simple. And we have to be careful not to conflate cigarettes that you buy at the drugstore with tobacco that is used intentionally and ceremonially and has been for generations. As mentioned, we don't even know how long it's been used, but it's been grown for over a millennia in South America. And we have pipes, seeds, and other clues as to how it was used traditionally and by whom. When colonial explorers brought tobacco to Europe, the plant quickly became known as a vice for nobility. And as tobacco became available to the masses, like too many plants, it became commodified, packaged, marketed, and profited from. As a product, tobacco became divorced from its cultural meaning and historical roots. But traditions that carry the old stories and see tobacco as medicine know a completely different plant. The Caridis in Brazil, the Witoto in Peru, the Cahuilla in California, and dozens of other groups view tobacco as a gift from the earliest days of creation, with the power to heal by connecting us with the world of spirit, not as a poisonous agent. The tobacco that we compulsively consume in the West is a variety known as Nicotiana tabacum, popular for its smooth smoke and desirable taste. No secret there. But in North and South America, many other varieties exist, and the Latin name for mapacho is Nicotiana rustica. It can be a lot harsher to smoke than what you're used to in cigarettes, and by some estimates has between 2 and 20 times the amount of nicotine, depending on the growing conditions. And it can actually make your head spin, something you might have experienced from smoking too many cigarettes and or smoking a spliff. And that's part of why it's less attractive commercially. I can tell you from smoking mapacho in the Peruvian Amazon outside of Iquitos and in Costa Rica that mapacho almost smells more like a cigar than a cigarette. It has a sweet smell and a few puffs can definitely shift your consciousness and make you feel lightheaded. But people who smoke it with frequency also find it grounding and this is also why it's sometimes offered in ayahuasca ceremonies. In the Sacred Valley of Peru and the Amazon, people train to work with plant medicines from well-known medicines such as ayahuasca to less known medicines such as mapacho, bobinsana, and many, many others by doing what are called dietas. And this is a period of time often spent in isolation under the supervision of a master, a teacher, 
where you essentially cultivate a relationship with a certain plant and the spirit of that plant. All indigenous cosmologies that I'm aware of anyway, and I'm not an expert, have some element of animism. And this is the idea that plants, fungi, animals, all life has a spirit. So you're not just cultivating a relationship with the plant, but you're cultivating a relationship with the spirit of the plant. Now I understand that might feel a little woo-woo to some people, but also I will say that a lot of people come to believe in animism after sitting with ayahuasca or even starting to just think about their mushroom experiences through this lens and trying to sort of communicate with mushrooms while they're under the influence and understanding it as sort of like a spirit that they can communicate with as opposed to just a substance that they're taking that's affecting their brain. So it could be worth a shot. While mapacho and other forms of tobacco are used in ceremonies with other types of plants all around the world, they're also considered powerful spirits on their own, which can bring healing and insights. Now, I've only ever personally experienced a mapacho blessing from someone in the Shipibo tradition, and the Shipibo are one of the largest indigenous groups in the Amazon. And if you sit in an ayahuasca ceremony with someone from the Amazon, they'll often be Shipibo. Not always, but oftentimes. The maestras and maestros I've sat with essentially approach you and blow the smoke around your body, on your shoulders, on top of your head, and into your hands. And I feel I'm outside of my scope to say why they do it exactly how they do, but I can tell you that the few times I've had it done, it has completely shifted my energy. And there were a couple of times in ceremony where I felt like I was stuck energetically. Like if you've ever experienced on a psychedelic, sometimes we call it a thought loop where you're just having the same thoughts and feelings over and over and over again. And the maestra or maestro observed that, came up to me and offered me a mapacho blessing. And it just shifted me into a completely different part of the experience. There was one time where I was rocking back and forth, really suffering in an ayahuasca ceremony. And after the mapacho blessing, it felt like the maestro had sort of sucked the negative energy out of me. And I literally went from seeing nothing and just rocking back and forth and feeling darkness to seeing all these little blue fairy lights that were enchanting in my mind. And then I just fell down on my mat and experienced pure delight. So I know it might sound odd and it's hard to explain, but I can really only speak to my own experience with this. Afterwards, we were gifted mapacho to take home and I just would smoke it in the morning when I meditated to kind of reconnect me with the ceremony space. Murav Artsi is a tabakera who we spoke to who facilitates tobacco dietas and ceremonies in the Sacred Valley of Peru. And she spent years drinking bitter tobacco teas. Um, with her teacher, Ernesto Garcia Torres, at his house in the jungle. And there she says she learned to work with plants, but that the knowledge didn't come from books. She told us Ernesto guided her through dozens of plant dietas to learn her craft directly from the plants. Again, the plants sort of being considered spirits in their own right. Marev isn't the only person that we interviewed that emphasized the importance of learning from the plants directly. And like I said, this is really what the dieta is all about. It's just about going into isolation and cultivating a relationship with the plant, which is beyond academic knowledge. It's beyond anything I could say in this video, right? It's just about being with the plants. When we asked Marev how tobacco works, she just told us tobacco is very direct with his messages and it's up to us whether we listen. Tobacco is typically seen, she told us, as a strong masculine energy, and she compared it to a sword cutting through illusions, a direct channel to the divine, and a key that opens the mind. She explained it can amplify the effects of other plants while also cautioning that all this doesn't mean it doesn't give you fantasies. And interestingly, this is something we've heard about other plants too, like ayahuasca, that even though these plants can help provide clarity that not everything you realize in ceremony is necessarily true and that sometimes these plants can also be sort of wily and you have to learn how to navigate them. We also asked someone else who has extensive experience dieting with tobacco about the spirit of the plant and we didn't get a straight answer. Um, he instead talked to us about how Westerners have a tendency to try to want to understand and categorize things, but that it's not that simple. He replied with a rhetorical question, which was, if you were to ask, you know, tell me about the spirit of a person, what's the answer? So as mentioned, it's impossible for science to fully contain and understand the indigenous cosmologies surrounding plants. 
there's just too many variables and elements that can't be studied. That said, there are some researchers who have tried to understand the effects of sacred tobacco. Jeremy Narby, who you might know from his book The Cosmic Serpent, is an anthropologist who has also spent time in the Amazon, experienced tobacco, and wrote a book called Plant Teachers, alongside another Peruvian tabaquero, Rafael Chanchari Pizzuri. The book examines tobacco from many angles, including modern science, and Narby is quick to acknowledge the potency of nicotine, saying, quote, it's one of the more toxic botanical substances in nature, as one or two drops of pure nicotine placed on the tongue or skin can kill an adult human. It's worth noting that purified nicotine is not traditionally used in any culture. Nonetheless, it's important not to underestimate nicotine's strength. Nicotine poisoning, which is more likely to occur with consumption methods like enema, teas, and combinations of various forms of tobacco, can actually be fatal. Narvi says in his book that the view of nicotine as an addictive and destructive compound isn't the whole story. And nicotine has a similar structure to the neurotransmitter as I always struggle with these, these Latin words, acetylcholine, meaning it can bind to receptors in our bodies, potentially influencing processes like learning and memory to muscle control. Inside the body, nicotine can trigger the release of acetylcholine, along with a cascade of dopamine, glutamate, adrenaline, and endorphins. And this can cause pleasure, euphoria, and wakefulness, which might come with cognitive effects like improved attention and memory, along with, of course, the potential for dependence. And Wired covered how nicotine and related drugs promote the growth of new blood vessels and its immunosuppressant effects may balance the immune system in some conditions. Other studies are also investigating nicotine for the treatment of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So in terms of addiction, it's no secret that many people have an unhealthy relationship to tobacco. But all the tabaqueros we spoke to emphasize that the problem is not the plant. It's how it's being used, abused, and misunderstood. And this is not to diminish how much suffering tobacco dependency can cause or the fact that it's real. But in this video in particular, because we're talking about a sacred plant mapacho, not just tobacco more broadly, we want to center the perspectives of its stewards and leave conversations about nicotine in general for another time. In our modern world, where tobacco often carries negative connotations, we believe it's crucial to treat this powerful plant with respect and consider that reframing this plant and understanding its history is just one step towards destigmatizing the world of plant medicines more broadly. For more videos like this one, subscribe to this YouTube channel or check out some of our articles at doubleblindmag.com.